for the next 45 minutes, I'm going to be working on my themed clinical discussion. I just got back from my cannulation, which was so much fun. My first placement yesterday on the emergency department, I didn't feel positive, I didn't feel good, I felt uh, low energy, I felt low mood, and I didn't really feel confident. So just in one shift, I've gone and got four sign-offs to a level three. It's honestly such an amazing day though, I wouldn't have changed it for anything. Good morning and welcome to today's day in the life of a third year medical student. Really, really exciting video planned for you guys because it's a little bit different to my usual. Normally I'll show you a full week in the life, but today it is an incredibly busy day. I have so many things. It's currently 8.20. As you can see from my timetable right here, I've got urinalysis and blood glucose swabs from 9 till 10.30, which is skills. I've got cannulation from 10.45 to 12.15, skills. And themed clinical debrief, which is from 1.30 to 3, which is basically a discussion on this week's case, which is on acute breathlessness, which I've done absolutely no work towards. And then from 5 p.m. till midnight, I'm on A&E. I'm on my clinical placement, so I'm on the wards, wearing my scrubs, and in the words of my girlfriend, doing doctory stuff. Talking to patients, it's a daunting thing, but extremely exciting, because I did my first placement yesterday, and there's just a lot to be doing. So before I get going, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a whistle stop of what is year three at medical school and how is it different to year one and two? Well, years three to year five is known as your clinical years. And that is because you are based in a hospital, which means you're gonna be doing 95% of your work in a hospital as opposed to preclinical years, which is very much like a normal traditional university course. You're based at a university campus in your preclinical years, you go to lectures, you do your group work and it is very much theory based. However, years three to five, which is now what I'm in, the clinical years is the exciting stuff. We're based in our clinical hospital, of which if you study at Manchester, there is MRI, Salford, Withenshaw or Preston, and you will spend all of your time at that base hospital. Now, the way that it's run is you do blocks. Now, what a block is, is a five week period on a different rotation. Four of those rotations will be medical rotations, such as cardiology, respiratory, emergency medicine, which is what I'm doing, uh, endocrinology, and your last rotation will be a surgical rotation. So that could be general surgery, colorectal surgery, uh, neurosurgery, anything of that sort. And the purpose of that is to give you a block with which is a four to five week period, giving you all of that insight and knowledge and clinical information and experience to really see what gets done in that specialty. Now for me, this is the first real week of year three because we've had a two week induction in the um, last two weeks. If you wanna watch that video, you can click on that card up there and that's gonna show you what we got up to in our induction week. But this first block is known as an introductory clinical learning block. So it's a four week block, which is formative. It's not summative, but it still feels pretty serious. This is just a chance for us to get used to what we're going to have to be doing when our real blocks start. Now, I did my first A&E placement yesterday, and guys, I've got to say, it is really, really different to anything else you've done. Um, you really, really feel like you're getting thrown in at the deep end. And I don't know if this is just the rotation that I'm on, the fact that I'm on A&E, um, but it is completely different to any kind of like practice with SPs, which are your actors that you practice with in preclinical years. I definitely felt like I was thrown in at the deep end yesterday. And the way that my university runs it is really good in that on these tracks were grouped with a group of six other students, six to eight other students. So the groups are really quite small. And those are the people that we do all of our clinical learning with, such as cannulation, venipuncture, and obviously today's urinalysis. We'll do that with a group of six other people. And then our clinical placements, we do basically independently. We'll go to the wards, we'll find a consultant, and quite literally, you just walk up to the consultant and say, hey, um, I'm a medical student, um, I'm on a clinical placement, is there things that I can be doing? <laughs> and basically, they will just pay you up with a doctor, registrar, a C SHO, 
foundation doctor, potentially a nurse. So just shadow them and basically just follow them around. But they will also be asking you to do X, Y, and Z. Go and do an examination, go and get that patient, go and speak to that patient and report to me and present what's up with them to me. And of course, after a four month period of just being away and just doing preclinical years, it is quite a daunting task. You definitely feel very rusty. And yesterday I felt really rusty, but time is definitely ticking by. It is 8.26 and my first session is at nine. So I need to get moving. First time I've actually had to do meal prep for the following day. So I've got two bagels for lunch, two hard boiled eggs for extra protein, banana, cliff bar, because otherwise it's gonna become incredibly expensive eating out every day. But I am gonna say most importantly, to get my caffeine fix, coffees, because of course that can be incredibly expensive. So I'm gonna use my chili bottle and my coffee machine to make coffee throughout the day. And if you're wondering what's in my bag, iPad, which is what I do all my work on throughout the day and take notes on, wallet, of course, camera stuff. <coughs> Electronic stethoscope, just cause I'm deaf and it helps me. Definitely need that on the wards. Food, coffee, two sandwiches, banana, apple, orange, eggs. Great. Bye-bye. just had our first session on glucose, urinalysis and swabs. She told us that it's quite literally very simple with swabs and there's nothing really complex to it. It was a 45 minute session and cannulation session is what's up next at 10.30. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go and get some studying done on this works, this week's TCD. Now I'd also say if you are placed at MRI, definitely get a locker. You've got to pay a £10 deposit just whilst you're on the placement because of course, whilst you're on the hospital, there really isn't much space in terms of staff rooms. So this is at the undergraduate centre where of course we do our training and skills labs. But of course, make sure you get there first. So there are still lockers remaining for you. For the next 45 minutes, I'm going to be working on my themed clinical discussion. And that is basically a two hour session that we have every Friday based on a case in that week. Now that casework is very likely gonna be very different to the placement that you're on. And that is because the placements vary for all students on the course. We're all doing different things at the minute. Of course, the eight people that are on my track are on the A&E department, but there are other people on cardiology, respiratory. But this week's TCD is a case that is on acute breathlessness. Now this week I've not looked at it, but this is meant to be our PBL style study. So throughout the week, we will have a topic that we need to you know, do our studying for using the resources online, zero to finals, pass med, geeky medics, all of those different resources to just get our knowledge up to speed on that topic. Then the clinical placements are there to help us use that knowledge that we're learning and practice it on placement with actual patients. So for us, of course, acute breathlessness, there'll be many opportunities, I guess, on this placement today to do some respiratory exams. So I'm gonna go do some work. So I've just found a seminar room that's free. So I'm just gonna use this room for the next half an hour to do some studying. All right, so I've just got back from my cannulation, which was so much fun. And these skill sessions are really, really important because in years three to pass, we've got various different things we've got to get through. And um, one of them is a list of 12 different UPSAs. Now an UPSA stands for an undergraduate procedural 
skills assessment, which is necessary for all medical students by the GMC. So this is just a requirement. And one of them is cannulation, venue puncture. There's a full list right here. So you can check out those kind of things there. And those are the real doctoring sort of skills that I'm really excited about putting those cannulas in. Quite a complex process, quite a few different steps that you need to be aware of. But I did witness a cannula being put in last night in A&E and loads of blood spewed out everywhere. But because it is fresh on my brain and we just had a two hour session there where I put four different ones in, three in the arm and then one in the hand as well, just practicing. I really am hoping to get signed off this evening in my placement. Now, the three different levels are level one, level two, level three. Now, to pass year three, you need to have a sign off of a level two, which means that you can do it under supervision. But by year five, in order to fully qualify as a doctor, you need to be signed off with your 12 upsers at a level three standard, which basically means you can do it with indirect supervision and you are completely competent to do the doctoring style stuff on your own. So yeah, really, really fun, the cannulation. And as I say, yeah, I really want to get my cannulation and my venue puncture signed off this evening, really, because I feel like those are the most complex, most invasive skills on the wards to be doing. And I just really, really want to push myself, especially considering I am having thoughts about doing anesthetics. That is what anesthetists will be doing all the time, putting lines in, putting cannulas in, and yeah, taking bloods. I'm really excited for this though. So I've got just about an hour until I've got my themed clinical debrief session. So I'm just gonna nip to Sainsbury's, go for a little walk, get some water, and go to the library and do a bit of work before that session. Now I've got to say, I actually have found the teaching at MRI in these clinical skill sessions to be really good because the sessions are small enough to feel like you are getting somewhat of a private bit of tuition and you can ask as many questions as you want and you don't feel like the groups are too big. And there's always generally two other doctors or two other nurses helping out if you do have any questions or you want any bits clarifying. So yeah, I got to do like four cannulas today, which was pretty cool and really good practice. It is now just about 5 p.m. and I have not stopped all day. It has just been back-to-back -back sessions, cannulations, swabs, lectures, a themed clinical debrief session though, which was actually amazing because that was a two-hour session going through this week's case, which is on acute breathlessness with a consultant who basically broke down the clinical way of like figuring out what a condition is and diagnosing it at the end and coming up with your differentials. It was a really, really interesting exercise at, you know, working out framework to follow and how to rule things out, how to think more broad in terms of what systems are involved, cardiovascular and respiratory, then thinking about the investigations you wanted to do, like the arterial blood gases and a CT scan, x-ray, and then figuring out that this person with acute breathlessness, in fact, had a pulmonary embolism. And it was just a two hour session, which was just really well run. It was interactive and, and it was with about six other groups. So there was about 30 of us in the lecture theater, but it gave us a really good chance to just work in groups and figure things out for ourselves. Really, really good session. And then after that, I've just had a, another two hour session on um, how to get the most of your clinical uh, placements and how to do the sign offs, how to do the patient assessments, what clinical reasoning is and how we should be practicing that. Uh, on the wards. So yeah, I literally finished 15 minutes ago and my placement on hospital is from 5 p.m. until midnight. So I'm about to do a massive shift. So I've decided to reward myself at Starbucks. Got a uh, pumpkin spice latte because it is that kind of season and I'm feeling pretty basic today. So we're going for a basic drink um, and hopefully this caffeine will give me the uh, energy and the fix necessary to uh, smash this next uh, seven hour shift in A&E on a Friday night. Very excited for it. So it is quarter past five, but it is pretty relaxed on A&E. They don't actually sign you in. You just kind of show up to the monitoring area, I guess you call it, the doctor's office, and just kind of latch on to one of the doctors, one of the regs, and just kind of fit in. All right, it is Friday, so there is nobody in the undergraduate center. 
because it's quarter past five. So straight to the locker room, get my scrubs, and then straight onto the ward. Scrubs, check, stethoscope, check, and iPad mini provided by the university to enhance our learning. Check. Let's go. Check in with you guys later. Let's just quickly come to the toilet because I've just put my first cannula in and I'm so, so happy at myself for doing that. The lady that I did it to was a little bit overweight. It was quite difficult to find the vein as well, but I managed to get it in on the second try. I pushed it in, pulled it back a little bit and put it directly in the vein and I managed to get blood out. Unbelievable. I'm so, so happy with myself. Today's shift is going really well. Wow, it is like 10.30 and I'm absolutely buzzing. This has been such an amazing, amazing shift. I've been shadowing some doctors, shadowing some nurses, putting cannulas in. I've done two cannulas. The first one I did with supervision. The lady, the nurse was watching over me pretty much, you know, all throughout, but I just smashed it, went straight in, managed to do all the bloods. Um, and then the second patient, I just did it with absolute ease and I got a level three sign off. But yeah, the kind of patients that I've been speaking to have been really, really wicked. Like it's just so daunting in the first day like yesterday when I first came on this emergency shift and was told by the doctors go and speak to that patient on that um in that bed um I was kind of like that's quite a daunting experience like just being a medical student coming off your summer holidays and just being like straight in the medical wards and like having to do with all the history um but yeah like you just gotta remain composed remain confident um but yeah i've really noticed that in the a and e block it is really about having the right attitude coming on the wards finding the doctors and being like look how can i help like i said to the nurses for the cannulations look i really really want to help you guys if there's anything i can do cannulating taking bloods venous punctures and they do not and they do this every day so of course you can do a cannula so um, yeah this is the place to get all your upses done and I'm really hoping that over this next three week period I'm gonna try and get all 12 done except my scrubbing up obviously you can only do that in my surgical block but yeah feeling good and have a quick bite to eat have this egg have this snack bar because I'm absolutely starving back to it Guys, it is 20 past midnight and what an amazing shift that has been. I found some of the best nurses to just shadow and I signed off so many things. I've done an ECG, signed it off to a level three. I've got a venue puncture done, signed it off to a level three. I've done my cannulation, signed off to a level three. And also the news score, signed it off to a level three. So just in one shift, I've gone and got four sign offs to the standard of a year five. Wicked, so much fun. And to be honest, I just breezed through them. And what I am realizing is here on A&E, if you wanna get your sign offs, this is the place to do it. You've just gotta be proactive. When people ask you, who you are and what you're doing here. Be proactive, tell them that you're a medical student and you're really, really interested and you want to help out and you want to offload their workload. Do some ECGs, do some venue punctures. They love that, the nurses love that. They're always so eager to help. And everyone at this hospital is so, so friendly, so, so willing to teach as well, even the doctors. Even though they're so busy, they thrive off having a medical student there and testing them. And it's just an amazing way to just kind of learn from the best in this clinical environment so so excited to push myself and you know get myself into this next three weeks here on this emergency department placement it has been so much fun today and such an incredibly busy day starting at 9 a.m and then finishing at 20 past midnight like i feel so my energy levels are still high and it's because i'm feeling so positive and so happy but the maddest thing of all is my first placement yesterday on the emergency department, I didn't feel positive, I didn't feel good, I felt uh, low energy, I felt low mood, and I didn't really feel confident. Um, and sometimes it's okay to feel like that, like I just had little sleep, I was unwell the day before, and you know, a bad place starting my placement, and I was a bit worried about how I'm gonna carry myself, because I felt like I was just getting in the way of it. Oh, what a day. Back home, 
back at the flat, I'm starving, I've not eaten anything substantial since lunch 10 hours ago. It feels good to be back. Such a, honestly, such an amazing day though. I wouldn't have changed it for anything. So many opportunities in A&E to learn, to get signed off, to speak to patients, to touch up on examinations, just to do everything. Just to doctor, basically. So one of the best things about coming home is of course, food being ready. Oh no, honey, I'm joking. And my beautiful girlfriend that's really unwell at the minute. I'm so, so sorry. She's been bed bound all day with headaches, fevers. And no doubt, I'm gonna end up ill tomorrow now. We've got a wrap mixture made by the lovely <laughs> and beautiful Jennifer. Um, and I'm having it in a protein wrap and some Mexican rice in there. Yum, yum, yum. And what time is it, sweetheart? 1.10. 1.10. And to end the longest day of days, I've got this lovely wrap. Guys, I've got to say, today has been absolutely unbelievable. I've had so much fun starting super early and just having things back to back. There's not been a single moment today that's been boring. I feel so grateful to be doing this and doing something that I enjoy at every point in the day. Learning new skills, putting them into practice, but actually practicing on real people. You know, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. And seeing the results and seeing how those skills that you've practiced earlier in the day translate into better outcomes for the patient. Yeah, wicked. And also the interaction, speaking to patients as well meeting a lad with sickle cell. Obviously, one of my best friends has sickle cell and has lived with it his whole life. So seeing another patient who lives with that, and you know, hearing about his experience, especially having a crisis in such pain, and then, you know, seeing how the doctor administered the morphine and then how he recovered a bit, and oh, it was so, so cool. That's been my day at medical school, and my girlfriend wants to hear all about it and the actual insight <laughs> that I'm about to give her because obviously you guys just get a small snippet. But if you wanna see more and hear more about these uh, snippets that I get up to, you know what to do, you need to hit that subscribe button because I plan on posting lots more content like this one, more of a day in my life, different to the content that we have posted on this channel previously, which has been a week in the life. But I feel like a lot more interesting stuff is happening now that you're probably gonna to wanna to hear about and see. And yeah, what I get up to as a medical student, third year, clinical years, on the wards. Dr. Matt, Dr. Matt. <laughs> In a few years, maybe. Well, that's it, I'm signing out. See you in the next one.